So in today's video, we're going to be going through the installation of Visual Studio, the premier development environment for building enterprise solutions using Microsoft and Microsoft adjacent technology. If you've been using Visual Studio Code, a powerful new IDE from Microsoft, you might have been aware that Microsoft also uh, offers a full fidelity experience with all the bells and whistles for free. Um, but for those who don't know, that's called Visual Studio Community Edition. And I'm right now on the Visual Studio website, which the links are below, but it's visualstudio.microsoft.com slash downloads. And you can see here Professional, which has a license associated with it, Enterprise, which also has a license associated with it. But over here on the left, you see the Community Edition, which is a free download. In today's videos, I'll be installing this on a Surface Studio Book so we can see all the full fidelity capabilities of the installation. Visual Studio Code is great because it can run on Mac, Windows, Linux, uh, you know, you name it. Unfortunately, the caveat with the full-fledged version of Visual Studio is that you're locked into uh, running this on a Windows operating system. Additionally, if you're on Visual Studio, if you're using Visual Studio and you're, for instance, on an ARM-based uh, device like a MacBook M2, you're going to get limited capabilities from your Visual Studio installation. You will not be able to do everything that you can do on the full-fledged version of Visual Studio. And if we have time at the end of the video, what I would do is I would show the macbook installation process so you can see all the features that exist on the macbook uh, i'm sorry on the windows side that don't exist uh, on the macbook side now i've already downloaded the community edition onto my device but as stated you can get it and get at it from visualstudio.microsoft.com and links will be in the description once you run the installer it'll open up the installation experience onto the workloads tab and that's what you're looking at right here right um there are four tabs associated with uh, the uh, visual studio installation there's workloads individual components language packs and installation locations the latter two should be self-explanatory uh, essentially language packs install additional languages not programming languages but actual human languages onto Visual Studio so that if you're not English speaking or prefer to use it with another language, you have the capability of doing it. Installation locations allow you to essentially modify where Visual Studio will be installed. So as you can see here, I can switch it to another location and I can pick French or German or Italian or any one of the languages that is supported here. Now, individual components should also be equally straightforward. Uh, essentially, they represent the actual components of Visual Studio and that will be added to the installation. By default, Visual Studio comes with just the core editor, which is described as the core shell experience, including syntax aware code editing, source control, and work item management. Everything else you have to add yourself and that's all the things that you're seeing over here uh, on the left side right all these need to be added like so now as you might imagine this can end up being somewhat confusing given that there is not necessarily a straightforward rational mapping between the individual components that you're seeing over here on the left and their relevance with standard development activities like, what do I mean by that? Well, if you are building a website, what do you need to pick here if you don't know anything about Visual Studio? Or what does .NET Native mean? So this is why that first tab, Workloads, is so important, right? Because Workloads help with this, right? They're essentially a collection of those individual components that we just saw. Um, but they've collected them together to the things necessary for working in a particular area, right? And they range from building web applications to writing extensions for Visual uh, Studio itself. 
I recommend using a combination of both to get the most tailored dev environment for your specific needs. And in this video, we'll be going through all the workloads uh, from the main x86, x64 base SKU of Visual Studio. And I'll be explaining what each of them is, what they're used for, and why one might choose to add them or not. Now, once we've gone through all that, we'll then go over to the individual components and perform some additional tweaks to our environment uh, in order to get it exactly how we want it. And for those individual components where it makes sense, I'll also be explaining um, what that does, what it's for, and why uh, you might want to add it or why you might want to remove it out from your installation. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking on ASP.NET and web development. So what does ASP.NET and web development get you? Um, it gets you all the appropriate tools for building uh, web applications. So if you want to build an ASP.NET MVC application, if you want to build web services, if you've ever heard of Blazor and you want to use Blazor and build those sorts of applications, uh, then you can go through there. It also additionally adds some cloud, cloud tools. So the ability for you to uh, build, um, you know, things like Azure functions, those sorts of things uh, uh, falls in there. Um, all of that wrapped together and we'll go into the individual components we just call, uh, it's just tied into issue.net web development. And bear in mind that this will install the full .NET framework um, into your environment. Um, so uh, not to get too much into it, but the full .NET framework is different from uh, what they call .NET now. What they call .NET now is a different version of .NET that's far more lightweight and can run on multiple operating systems. What they call .NET now, I would liken more to Java and the JVM and how you can have the JVM running uh, on Linux, on, on uh, Windows, on all these different operating systems. They've essentially created the same thing with, uh, with dot, starting with .NET. Uh, five, so .NET 5, 6, 7, all those things, they're all historically uh, referred to as .NET Core. Um, they changed the name to brand it all .NET, but that's different from the .NET framework, which is a Windows-specific framework. It'll work on Windows um, operating system, machines that have Windows running on them, and essentially uh, that's it. Won't work anywhere else. Okay. So ASP, um, Azure development, this will give you uh, containers, um, ability to deploy containers. It'll give you deployment related activities so you can deploy into Azure, whether that be um, the ability to create ARM templates, um, whether it be uh, um, tools for cloud services, the Azure PowerShell, you name it. You can see some of the things on the side and we'll talk about them as we get into it. But essentially it lets you um, interact with Azure, even though it doesn't necessarily create any projects that you can work with. This on the left of the ASP.NET Web Applications creates a ton of projects. Um, Azure development doesn't necessarily create any projects, right? Okay. Python development, right? So that's self-explanatory. If you want to do it Python related work, you check that. So we're going to check that here. Um, and you can see on the left um, that when you select it, it gives you optional components to add. Do we want web support? Yes. Do we want native development tools? Yes. Do we want Python 3? Why not? <laughs> right? And if we go up here, you can do the same sort of things. If you go to ASP. If we go to the ASP.NET, look at all that list of things that um, that are not there, that are not checked. So you can check any one of these if you want to add them. So if you want to add Teams development, you can check that. Now, of course, we're going to do Node. Um, I'm not a Node person, but I'm going to select Node anyways, because um, for those Node people, uh, it makes sense to check that. So on the desktop side, um, what are the things to select, right? So .NET MAUI is yet another um, desktop UI platform from Microsoft. Um, so um, Enter at your own risk. <laughs> I'm not going to down the great people who have put this thing together and all the work that they've done. I would just say that um, since in the past 20 years, I don't think there's been any one desktop 
UI technology from Microsoft that has lasted more than three years. And then in one form or another, um, uh, a new ver a new thing comes out that you've got to be that you you just got to jump on right <laughs> you know you just got to get on this one right so .NET Maui is the newest new thing right and right now as I understand it this guy allows you to build applications that can run on web mobile well okay let me not say web applications that can run on mobile and desktop at the same time right so and then they also it also integrates with web applications so if you have a blazer application you can actually build a dotnet maui application that leverages components from that application but it will not run on the web that's it just it runs on some device somewhere so that's what that is desktop and mobile right dotnet desktop development we'll check that so what do we get from that? First of all, let me go here. You notice there's nothing but SAML here. So .NET Desktop Development, what do we get from that, right? So this is your WinForms. Your um, WinForms is the native desktop development. Pretty much nobody uses it anymore. Um, uh, you know, so it's really just support for legacy stuff, uh, you know, but it's not packaged by itself. So there's no reason to you can't uncheck it, right? Um, but I will say this, I haven't used, I haven't found any reason to use WinForms since maybe 2005. Um, C++ desktop, desktop development, I'm not gonna check that, I don't use that. Um, but essentially it allows you to build desktop applications using uh, C++. Okay, Universal Windows Platform. So just looking over here, you can see that there are three technologies, more than three. You have Maui, you have in here WPF, that's two, WinForms, that's three. And then down here, you have another one, that's four, right? So this is just another way of creating a window. <laughs> and, and by the way, the capabilities are not, you know, are not like, um, there's no superset. So this guy is going to have its own capabilities that are cool and unique to it. There might be some overlap with .NET applications, but this guy will have its cool reasons for existing, right? So WPF has its reasons for existing. If you have a Windows 10 or Windows 11 application, um, I think you can use WPF uh, pretty safely, right? Across the board. So I will not check WPF, I will not check C++ or C++ Mobile Gaming, um, but essentially this gives you the ability to build applications. This is like, allows you to build cross platforms application for Android, iOS, or Windows using C++. That's the value proposition there. Um, under gaming, uh, you can create um, uh, games, 2D and 3D games using Unity. Very powerful uh, thing that's built into Visual Studio, very powerful. And it you know, goes out saying that for now, this is a Windows-based technology. Now let's go to other tool sets, some of the cool stuff there. So data and storage. So let's say you use SQL Server and you wanna be able to connect to it and you wanna be able to query it, you wanna be able to uh, create um, a data migration um, uh, scripts using SQL Server integration services, um, SSIS packages, then Bam, you need data and storage processing. That's what that does. Um, data science and analytics applications. So if you check that, right, then this gives you a Python and allows you to do um, analytics on data uh, using, uh, using, using those technologies. Visual Studio extensions, we talked about it before. Um, this allows you to extend Visual Studio to add more capabilities uh, to it. And over here on the right, you have your Office and SharePoint development. What does this give you? Well, this gives you the uh, tools for you to be able to integrate into um, Office. So right now we are on my MacBook Pro M2 Max processor, ARM-based PC, running Windows 11 on Parallels. And I've downloaded Visual Studio to this device and I've run it. This is the community edition, just like before, Visual Studio 2022 17.7.6. And you can immediately see that the workload list is 
significantly less than uh, what it previously was. We still have the ability to create Visual Studio extensions, and we still have the ability to make games in C++, Linux development. We still have a universal Windows platform. We have .NET development, and we have .NET MAUI. Uh, we've lost Python, um, and we really only have ASP.NET development and Node. We don't have our Azure tools anymore. So all the PowerShell, all that sort of stuff is all gone. Um, and, um, and that's basically it.